in the previous lecture we have started a new chapter in classical mechanics and that is regarding the motion of a particle in a central force field in fact uh, in that introductory lecture you have seen that i have told you that uh, motion under a central force field always takes place in a plane and uh, if the motion is in a plane then definitely the two dimensional coordinate system should be used to deal with the motion of the particle and so uh, there may be a coordinate system which is called cartesian coordinate system or plane polar coordinate system but as i have told you that uh, to deal with the problem of motion under central force field the use of the plane polar coordinate system is more convenient uh, with respect to the cartesian coordinate so generally we adopt the plane polar coordinate system in dealing with the problem of uh, motion in a central force field and uh, so the there is a need of uh, knowing what will be the unit vectors in plane polar coordinate system what will be their derivatives with respect to time and with respect to theta and apart from that we also need the expression for velocity and acceleration of a particle moving in a plane in plane polar coordinate system so in the previous lecture we have deal uh, we have dealt the concept of the unit vectors used in a uh, case of plane polar coordinate system you have seen actually uh, there are two unit vectors in plane polar coordinate system and those two unit vectors are called radial unit vector which is denoted by the symbol r hat and the transverse unit vector which i have denoted by the symbol theta hat okay i have mentioned here the important results which we have seen in the previous lecture you can see we have defined the radial unit vector r hat as e to the power i theta why r hat is defined by e to the power i theta i have already discussed in the previous lecture and similarly the transverse unit vector you have seen is defined as theta hat equal to e to the power i theta plus pi by 2 so you can see it is obvious that this theta hat unit vector which is called transverse unit vector that is just normal to the vector r hat okay apart from this you have seen that the time derivative of r hat that is that of the radial unit vector was obtained in the previous lecture as theta dot theta hat where theta dot you know this is just the time derivative of theta that is d theta by dt is written as theta dot and similarly we have also seen that uh, d theta hat dt is equal to minus theta dot r hat <coughs> okay and apart from these things you have also seen that the derivative of r hat with respect to theta that is d r hat d theta is equal to theta hat and d theta hat by d theta is equal to minus r hat all these uh, results we have discussed in the previous lecture now in the present lecture our aim is to find the expression for velocity and acceleration of a particle moving in a plane in terms of the plane polar coordinates r and theta okay i hope you are uh, you know the concept of velocity and acceleration in uh, cartesian coordinate system and in this lecture our aim is to deal with the expression for velocity and acceleration in plane polar coordinate that is in terms of r and theta so let us uh, start first of all to know the expression for velocity of a particle moving in a plane in terms of the plane polar coordinates r and theta 
Now you know uh, if we denote the velocity of the particle moving in a plane by vector v, from definition of uh, velocity, you know velocity is simply the time derivative of position vector or radius vector. So v, you know, is defined as dr dt. This is just the basic definition of velocity vector, you know. Now, uh, you can see that this vector r, which is actually the radius vector of the position of the particle, this is actually directed in the direction of the unit vector r hat. So, uh, you can express this uh, vector r in terms of r hat like this. This can be written as d dt modulus of r, which, is, which I have written here r, times r hat. So, instead of this vector r, you can write mod of r times uh, r hat. Okay. Now, see here. Now, uh, during the motion of the particle, this uh, r and r hat both changes with time. So, this is just a product of two functions. So, applying the rule of differentiation of product of two functions, you can differentiate it. So, you can see this will be equal to what? This will be dr dt times r hat, okay? And plus r dr hat dt, okay? Now, this uh, dr by dt, this is denoted by the symbol r dot. So, this is r dot times r hat and plus r. Now, you can see, you have seen in the previous lecture, which I have mentioned here, that this dr hat by dt, this is equal to theta dot times theta hat. So, instead of this uh, dr hat by dt, you can write what? You can write this is in fact theta dot times theta hat. Okay. And uh, we will write this expression as v r r hat a plus v theta theta hat. Okay. So v is equal to this much. Now, you can see, I have written here actually vr instead of this r dot. When you say r dot, that means dr by dt. And actually, this vr is the component of this velocity vector in radial direction. So, this component of velocity vector v in radial direction is called radial velocity. So, this is equal to radial velocity. Okay. As uh, in case of uh, Cartesian coordinate system, you get the x component of velocity and y component of velocity like that. In plane polar coordinate system, the first component of velocity is denoted by the symbol vr and it is defined by r dot which means dr by dt and this is called actually the radial velocity. Okay. Now, again you can see I have written the symbol v theta at the place of r times theta dot or you may say this is r times d theta by dt. Actually this component of velocity is directed in the transverse direction that is perpendicular to the radial direction and so it is called transverse velocity. This component v theta is called transverse velocity and uh, I have uh, actually defined this radial and transverse velocity but you should remember it because this uh, these expressions for vr and v theta will be frequently used when we will discuss the theory or the problem of motion under central force field. So definitely you should remember it vr equal to r dot and v theta equal to r theta dot and this is called actually the transverse velocity. Now you can see that the radial uh, component of velocity, this is vr, 
and the transverse component of velocity this is v theta these two components are actually the orthogonal components both are perpendicular to one another and so the resultant velocity vector v has been uh, written as a vector sum of these two components so in the light of uh, equation 1 if you will write the modulus of velocity vector v which we will simply denote by the symbol v what will be that that will be equal to vr square plus v theta squares square root okay or you may also say that this is equal to r dot square plus r square theta dot square square root okay this is the modulus of velocity i hope uh, this is a very simple calculation very simple uh, concept and definitely you have understand it so but main thing is that uh, you have to remember these expressions because we will frequently use these formulas in our discussion uh, of this chapter okay now secondly we will see the expression for acceleration of the particle moving in a plane uh, in uh, in case of plane polar coordinate system now you know uh, acceleration of a particle is defined as the time derivative of its velocity vector so a will be defined by dv dt this is just the basic definition of acceleration okay now to get the expression for acceleration we will simply put in this result the expression for velocity vector v which we have just obtained you have seen that this uh, velocity vector v is equal to what this is in fact uh, r dot r hat plus r theta dot theta hat this is actually the expression for the velocity vector now we will operate this operator d dt on each term so this will be d dt r dot times r hat plus d dt r times theta dot times theta hat okay now using the uh, rules of differentiation of product of two or more functions we will differentiate it so you can see this will be dr dot by dt times uh, r hat plus r dot times dr hat by dt actually this has been written at the place of this first term okay now in the second term you can see there there is a product of three functions so we will again apply the rule of differentiation of product of but uh, two or more functions so what will be the result you can see this will be dr dt times theta dot theta hat plus now r d theta dot by dt theta hat and plus now lastly you can write r theta dot d theta hat by dt okay now uh, r dot by and uh, sorry dr dot by dt this will be what this is simply r double dot when you say r double dot that means what that means d2r by dt square okay and times r hat plus now uh, you can see the time derivative of this dr hat by dt just i have mentioned that this dr hat by dt this is equal to what this is in fact dr hat by dt you have just seen that this is 
theta dot times theta hat. I have mentioned this result and explained this result in the previous lecture. You can see this is dr hat by dt. This is theta dot times theta hat. Okay. So, we will substitute this expression for dr hat by dt here. Now, plus, now see this term. Here is, there is dr by dt which will be written as r dot. So, this is r dot times theta dot times theta hat. Okay. And uh, now, see. In this term, there is d theta hat by dt. And you know d theta hat by dt, this is theta dot r hat. So, there will be minus sign here. This is minus r times theta dot times r hat. Okay. A times theta hat times theta hat sorry oh sorry this is actually not this is d theta dot by dt and so this will be simply a theta double dot theta double dot this is not theta hat but theta dot so this is r theta double dot times theta hat and there will be actually here then plus sign not minus sign okay and in the last term you can see here there is actually the time derivative of the transverse unit vector theta hat so in this expression we will substitute the value of d theta hat by dt which is negative and that will be minus r theta dot times now d theta hat by dt this is minus theta dot r hat so i have put it uh, put it here minus sign and this will be theta dot times r hat okay now uh, let us simplify the this uh, the the terms in rhs of this equation to some extent you can see that uh, this r hat unit vector is present in the first term and in the last term so let us uh, combine these two terms so what will be the result this will be r double dot minus now see this term last term this is r theta dot square r theta dot square and uh, r hat okay now see these two terms this term and this term both of these terms are same and so this will be simply added and this will be 2 r dot theta dot times theta hat 2 r dot theta dot uh, 2 r dot theta dot theta hat and again uh, we will take the theta hat as a common factor so don't write here this theta hat we will write it by taking the common so this is 2 r dot theta dot and plus this this term this is plus r theta double dot and theta hat okay okay now, <clears throat> this is the expression for acceleration of the particle moving in this plane in terms of the plane polar coordinate system. Now, uh, you can write this expression as A r times r hat a plus A theta times theta hat. Okay. And... Uh, what will be the equation number you can say this will be equation number three actually here i have used the symbol a r at the place of this much and a theta at the place of this much okay 
in fact uh, you can see that this uh, acceleration ar is directed in the direction of r hat that is the radial unit vector and a theta is directed in the direction of theta hat that is in transfer direction so this uh, ar is called radial acceleration and a theta is called transverse acceleration or you may also say that ar is the radial component of acceleration vector a and a theta is the transverse component of acceleration vector a so actually in this case you can see there will be two components of acceleration and the first component of acceleration is called radial acceleration so what is the radial acceleration you can see what is the expression for the radial acceleration you have just obtained actually i have denoted this radial acceleration by the symbol ar and you can see this ar has been written at the place of this much that is r double dot minus r theta dot square okay so this ar will be equal to r double dot minus r theta dot square r theta dot square or equivalently you may write it as d2 r dt square and minus r d theta dt square this is actually the expression for the a radial acceleration of the particle or in other words you can say this is the acceleration directed in radial direction okay now the second component of the acceleration vector is called transverse acceleration and what is this transverse acceleration you can see this is transverse acceleration i have denoted this transverse acceleration by the symbol a theta and you can see a theta has been written at the place of this much you can see it here this is 2 r dot theta dot plus r theta double dot r theta double dot so write this expression for a theta here this is equal to 2 r dot theta dot and plus r theta double dot okay now uh, this uh, expression in rhs may be uh, written in a convenient form this uh, uh, term can be written as 1 over r d dt 1 over r d dt r square theta dot r square theta dot actually this form of the expression for a theta is more convenient and you can check it i am not uh, uh, giving the explanation of this expression this is just a homework for you when you will actually simplify this result you will get that it is simply equal to 2 r dot theta dot plus r theta double dot so the expression for the transverse acceleration you should remember this is 1 over r d dt r square theta dot you will see in the discussion of motion under central force field that this form of expression for a theta will be very convenient and very informative when we will discuss actually the problem of motion under central force field okay so these are the expressions for the radial acceleration and the transverse acceleration now uh, i hope you have understand uh, what are the expressions for velocity and acceleration of a particle moving in a plane in plane polar coordinates but again i am telling you that uh, to remember these results is actually more uh, necessary for you for uh, its derivation because the result uh, will be frequently used so we definitely these results should be in your mind always 
Now uh, to clarify the concept, I am just uh, solving a problem here. Just uh, as an example, I am solving a numerical problem. This is a very important problem and you can see its solution and uh, we will get actually some more uh, information from this problem. So the problem says that if the if the radial sorry the page has been turned but it will be okay don't worry this is just uh, a problem of my device but uh, this problem is just uh, removed you can see so <coughs> The problem says that if the radial and transverse velocities, if the radial and transverse velocities, radial and transverse velocities of a particle of a particle are always proportional to each other proportional to each other proportional to each other then so that so that the path is path is an equiangular equiangular spiral this is a very simple problem a spiral uh, so what uh, in this problem has been to explain you can see the problem says that the radial velocity and the transverse velocity of a particle are always always uh, proportional to one another and if the radial and transverse velocity are proportional then we have to show that uh, the path followed by the particle will be an equiangular spiral so let us say uh, start to solve this problem by simply uh, applying the condition defined in this problem you know that uh, radial velocity how this radial velocity is defined you have just seen a radial velocity we know this is defined as vr equal to r dot and that means dr by dt just you have seen okay and uh, how this transverse velocity is defined you know you have seen that this transverse velocity is defined as v theta equal to r theta dot okay r theta dot and uh, this is simply r d theta dt okay now uh, as the problem says that the radial velocity is always proportional to transfer velocity so in this problem it is given that this v r is proportional to v theta or you can say that uh, this v r equal to k times v theta here actually this k is the proportionality constant okay now 
let us put the expression for this vr and v theta in this equation so at the place of uh, this vr you can write dr by dt okay so this is dr by dt and that is equal to k times v theta and v theta you know this is r d theta by dt okay d theta by dt now let us simplify this result you can see this result can be written as dr by r is equal to k times d theta because uh, dt is present in both sides so that will cancel out and you can write this expression as dr by r equal to k d theta now uh, let us say uh, integrate this to get the equation of the path so integral of uh, dr by r this equal to k integral of uh, d theta okay now you know that uh, integral of dr by r this is simply ln r and uh, this is k and integral of d theta this will be theta and plus uh, some integration constant actually uh, as uh, in lhs there is a logarithmic value of r so it is more convenient to write down the value of constant in terms of log so let us write the integration constant as log a this log a this is just integration constant ln a this is integration constant integration constant okay now when you will take this constant factor in lhs this will be ln r minus ln a and that is equal to k theta okay and this will be simply ln r over a and uh, this is equal to k theta now r over a will be what this will be e to the power k theta no oh. and uh, you can see this r is equal to a times e to the power k theta okay e to the power k theta okay so this is actually the equation of the orbit or the trajectory or the path followed by the particle and you can see this equation is nothing this is simply the equation of an equiangular spiral okay so this is equation of an equiangular angular spiral and so you can say that the path followed by the particle whose radial velocity is always proportional to transverse velocity is definitely an equiangular spiral so what uh, was to prove in this problem we have actually proved it and i hope uh, you have enjoyed this lecture because this was a very simple concept but uh, again i am telling you you must remember all the results for particularly for the results for radial and transverse velocity radial and transverse acceleration for the further reading so you should remember it okay and now in the forthcoming lecture we will start the concept of central force first of all we will know what is a central force what are its different properties and after that we will deal motion of a particle in a central force field okay so thank you very much